Hey, Sammy fam. Today we are having falafel waffle. That is fun to say. So I've been cleaning out my fridge, getting ready to move because we're buying a house. Right now I'm living in Brooklyn, New York, but we're moving all the way up to Albany. We're closing on a house, so I got to clean out my fridge. And I found in my fridge, in my freezer, there's all this falafel dough paste that I made either like right before I broke my arm or right after. It's kind of fuzzy. I don't really remember. But all I remember is that I did not feel up to actually cooking it. So I just put it in the freezer and forgot about it. So I was like, what can I do? Uh, and I made it into waffles. And even though the dough was like six months old, it's still freaking delicious and like herby and fresh and amazing. Way easier than making falafel balls. So I got all these toppings here. I have lamb that I have cooked with harissa seasonings, those kind of Middle Eastern, North African flavors. It's a little bit spicy, a little bit of like red pepper going on in there. Some like roasted bell pepper flavors, uh, garlic, onion, other herbs and spices that make it kind of rosy and fresh, super tasty. We have here thinly shredded mm, red onions, cucumbers, lightly tossed in some rice vinegar that I mixed with Prosecco vinegar. I have a lot of different types of vinegars in my kitchen. And just a touch of salt. Then we have fresh block of feta cheese. And for some added creaminess if we need, we have mayonnaise. So let's get topping. I think I'm going to start by putting some cheese down on one of these. Just kind of mash it in. Yeah. And then let's do some lamb. And then a little bit of our veggie mix here. And hit that with just a squiggle squaggle of mayonnaise. This looks like art. Freaking delicious, I hope. Oh my God. Mm -mm -mm. Flavor combo of the gods. That is so good. The lamb. The fattiness of the lamb balances out the slightly aggressive herbiness of the falafel. And the acidity of the vegetables balances that out with the fattiness of the lamb. So it's like a perfect trifecta. It's like three different notes, it's like a chord. Mm. Falafel waffle is super filling though. Mm. And the creaminess of the feta cheese. I love a fresh feta, feta, I don't know how to say it, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean. It's like a fresh one. You get a little bit more softness than crumbliness. It has that delicious brine flavor from soaking in the brine. And there are like varying levels of it. This one is a much kind of milder one. I think it's a, a French feta, which is weird. But in this application, I like the milder one because I'm getting the acidity from the vegetables. I've had much tangier ones. What's that one called? Eperos, Eperos or something. Uh, it comes in little like plastic uh, tanks almost, you know, that's soaked in this very salty acidic brine and they're so good. It's so tangy, really good on sandwiches and salads and stuff. But it's nice that you have a variety to choose from. Oh my goodness. It's kind of fun cleaning out the fridge 
seeing how creative you can be with your limited and leftover ingredients. I love these falafel waffles. I would love to make them on purpose instead of just from leftovers. Because I think if you were making them on purpose, you would change up the recipe a little bit to make it a little bit wetter and have a little bit more um, body to it, a little bit more lift to it, be that from like baking soda or something to make it rise up when you put it in the waffle maker. But this is good. This is delicious. It's very dense. It's very filling. I had these huge bags of frozen falafel dough and I only made a few waffles from them because it's just such a, a dense product. Let's make another one. It's a little bit bittersweet doing this, you know. It's the sign of an end of an era. I've lived in this apartment since like 2015 maybe. So that is a long time. But you know, oh, I just dropped some lamb on my crotch. Going from one bedroom to four stories is a big upgrade, especially when it's actually cheaper, which is insane. Mm. I will miss a lot of the beautiful morning views that I get walking around the city. Because a huge part of my life is every morning I wake up at 5 a.m. and walk like 15, 20 miles. Well, this morning I saw the Queen Mary, or the, the QE2, I believe, coming in. It was so cool, you know, right there in front of the Statue of Liberty. But, there's always a but. Moving upstate, moving to Albany has its own things to offer. Like, I won't just be surrounded by buildings all the time. Uh, you know, a few miles away from my house, I can get into nature preserves. So without a car in the morning, I'll be able to go walk out to a, a rare ecosystem of uh, inland pine barrens on sandy soil with pine trees and animals and beautiful flowers. Maybe not in the winter, but it'll always be different and unique and its own kind of beautiful that I will adapt to and I'm sure I will appreciate the quiet of. I am somewhat scared of the solitude. Not that I'm a people person. I just straight up ignore and walk past anybody on the street who tries to like stop me and ask me for money. But in the city, there's a sense of like safety from There's people around, there's eyeballs on you. You're alone, but you're not alone. It's like you can cry on the subway and no one will bother you, which is nice. But if you need help, you can get help. But like out in, I mean, I say small town, it feels like a small town, but I guess the area is technically like a million people. But you know, there are sidewalks and stuff and it's walkable, but there's no one out there. When I've been walking around there on visits, I'm just the only person out which is kind of eerie. But you know, I keep my traffic on, so if anything happens to me, hopefully my wife can find me, or at least find my body. These are so good and so fresh. smeared in there like it's butter. The spice is making my nose run a little bit. I am kind of annoyed right now though. We have been waiting to close forever. And everything is good to go. This is a pretty one.
I don't know if I'm making a mess. The light bulb might crouch. But we've been cleared to close forever. Mortgage is all approved. Um, I have like a rate lock until next month at 6.8. So 6.875. So that's okay, you know, compared to whatever 8.5 people are at now. Insane interest rates. Um, I got my insurance set up. I got all the money for the down payment. It's like transferred into a local bank and everything. Everything's ready to go. And we keep asking our lawyer, like, okay, like, we're available. When can we close? And she just doesn't get back to us. So that's super annoying. Um, It's like, give us, you know, give us a date next week. Give us a couple days for us to get all the utility transfers set up and book our train tickets to come up and do it and we'll do it. But she just keeps like wanting to wait till the last minute and only wants to give us like 24 hours notice. It's like, no, you can't do that. Is it like, It's just unnecessary stress. It doesn't need to be that way. Like, I'm paying you to do a job for us. Mm. But hopefully it will all work out. Um, I think the next step is that our... Uh, what do they call the people who show houses and sell them and do all the stuff? Real estate agent. A real estate agent who said, okay, this is going on too long. Just make an email of like every single party involved. The bank, the real estate agents, the assistants to the real estate agents, the lawyers, the assistants to the lawyers. And to say, like, we're ready to go. We're just waiting on you. So, like, kind of put it on her on blast, but, like, politely. Because we just want to make it happen. Being in limbo, waiting for it to happen, is more stressful than actually just getting it done. Especially with the house sitting empty. And it's technically not my responsibility right now. But I don't want anything to happen to it while it's empty that will affect the sale. It's not like interest rates are going to go down if we have to cancel and try again with another house. Fingers crossed. We'll get it done quick. And you also guys will start seeing videos from the new house soon. I'm not really sure how that's going to work though. The kitchen needs to be redone. I'm going to try to figure out some like temporary filming solution. We're going to have no furniture. We're throwing away a lot of stuff because it's all like Ikea stuff that we got here in Brooklyn. And we're going to upgrade to like real furniture. And we've been saving money for years and years and years. So we're like, let's just get nice stuff and really go for it. Pieces that we'll want to keep forever. But I'm literally not going to have a table to sit at or a chair to sit on until we make a lot of purchases. I've been thinking though I might move my lights, my camera gear, tripods, all that kind of stuff, audio gear, up into the attic because it does have, you know, it's not just rafters, it has boards down across it and we want to finish it eventually but it might be a good space right now where once i get a table up there or something uh i could film you know mukbangs 
and ASMR food videos up there. And I could maybe put my exercise bike up there. It'd be nice and cool in the winter. It's an uninsulated attic. And it might just be an interesting backdrop, you know? Uh, but I would still, you know, wear my GoPro and film my cooking stuff in the kitchen and on the grill. I'm so excited to be... Well, the backyard's ugly right now. The backyard needs to be redone. There's a lot of money that needs to go into this house, but um, we'll get there. But I'll be out back grilling with the GoPro on, too. That'll be a lot of fun. I'll have to figure out how to light that. It'll be interesting. But there's one new project I want to start. So you guys may know that I play cello. Or I, I mean, I still can play cello, but I don't play it very much because I live in an apartment building and I'm not one of those people who feels comfortable annoying my neighbors. So I generally try to be pretty quiet. So when we move, I'm very excited. I can play my cello, I can play my bass, I can use my giant Bose stereo system, blast music, and I won't you know, be annoying anyone, I'll be just having a good time. But I want to do a project where I start using my cello to make videos for some kind of new channel. I have to come up with a name. But with my arm, I can't play super fast for a long time. It hurts. Um, you know, cello you hold like this, and there's your bow where you're plucking. And this is where you're doing all your finger work, your fingering. So what I want to do is I want to record, you know, every single note. Da, 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 da. Or da, uh, 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 yeah. Why can't I make my brain do the, like, half steps? But anyway, you get it. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, and everything in between. All the way up. Record playing every note on the cello with the bow record playing every note on the cello with uh, plucking and then do various um, mm -hmm. do various attacks do a pianissimo attack do a light medium and then do like a forte or fortissimo or whatever and so I'll have to just like banks in my computer recorded on video and in audio I'll chop it up in every single note and then I want to go into a video editor, Premiere, and like play songs with the chopped up video. And I, it sounds like a huge pain in the butt and that it'll take forever. But it also means I could play things that I can't actually play physically. And they would sound kind of unique and choppy, but I think that might be kind of the fun of it. I might try just to do do at least one of those. I assume it'll take like a month. The hardest part will just be recording everything and chopping it up in an organized fashion into all the notes and labeling it and the file management of it all. Um, making the songs will be tricky and time consuming, but at least it'll be fun. And when I find a task is fun, I can actually like devote myself into it and dive into it a lot more when I was a kid and, you know, I didn't have to worry about making money. I didn't have to worry about anything, you know. I was lucky that school was easy and I just did my chores and I had no other responsibilities. I would spend hours and hours and hours and hours and stay up all night, like doing things in Photoshop and doing things with video editors and just messing around and making projects for no reason. There wasn't even YouTube. There's nowhere to post it. It's just for me. So I want to capture some of that magic again. Oh, it was so good. So full, you Oh my God. But there's a lot to look forward to, a lot to do. And I'll be keeping you guys you know, up on everything happening and showing you a new house and projects we're working on and 
new foods we're making and trying and there'll be lots of restaurants to try. Once we get a car, um, I'll probably mount a camera in the car and start doing some like local uh, food reviews of stuff that might be too far for me to walk to or get delivered and do that in the car. So that would be fun, something new. Oh, what is making me so gassy? Mm. I'm excited. Once we get over the hump of actually buying and moving, then everything will be, it won't be easy, but it'll be exciting. And I'll be away from people fighting all the time in the apartment next door. So thank you guys for watching. I think the parts are a sign that I need to um, go potty. And I want to build one of these and take it to my wife. Who's working in the other room, so. She can give it a try. Love you all. See you soon.